Welcome to West of Tulsa. I'm C.J. Ward, and we are broadcasting from Studio 3 in Ventura, California. And I'm going to start off, otherwise I'm going to get in trouble with Gabe, if I don't start off with the tip line, right? Yes. <laughs> I Hopefully more people are making it to the end of one of our shows. But well, that's why we're doing it, because so few people make it to the end of our shows and never don't they don't know we have a tip line. So we have one. Go to our website, westoftulsa.com, click on the tip line link, fill it out, join us in studio. We actually have people who've been contacting us, and they're going to be on the show. We have three, several people. Yeah, we have several people. We have yeah. booked three guests through the tip line already. One of them from Oregon. Oregon. Um, where's the uh, – uh, oh, we had another one, SoCal. Um, SoCal. Just – that was – Yesterday, or we just day. had somebody on from New Hampshire. New Hampshire, yeah, yeah. Wow. yeah. yeah. So we're going multi-state it, here. It's a tip thing. Line it's a thing. It's a, it's a, thing. It's a big thing. <laughs> yeah. All right. So as you can tell, everybody's here except for Beth again. Boo. She has a job where she gets paid. So she's <laughs> somebody's got to make some money around yeah, here. Exactly. Our guests, and I love it. Oh, oh, I'm gonna hurt wow. somebody. <laughs> Very excited. I'm gonna hurt wow. somebody. It's a wow. sign of things to come. <laughs> Melissa Way is here from Karma Care. Yes. And we have a return. Yes. Christina Jimenez Hello. from Miss Motorhead is joining us again. So I have to ask first question again. I get in trouble if Gabe if I don't do this, but what did you guys drive to get here? I drove a 2019 Subaru WRX. Ooh, nice. That's my daily. Yeah. Christina? I brought my wagon, my Subaru Legacy GT wagon. Yeah. Nice. We heard it roll up. Yes. Yeah. We yeah. Oh, look who's here. Yeah. So, but before we get going into what Melissa's up to, we have to ask, because on one of our previous shows, uh, you brought up a topic that actually got a lot of traction on our socials. So According to we Christina, get, yeah. Yeah, so mm-hmm. we, have to, we have to ask about it. But the speed dating thing, you've yeah. come up with a whole new concept. We threw out some ideas, too, but I think your ideas are probably better than ours. So. <laughs> yeah, that was interesting, actually. I didn't expect that to happen. I know we were just talking about dating in general, but um, I think... There was a show slash speed dating thing in San Diego somewhere and somebody messaged me and they were like, hey, you need to do something like that out here. And then a few people then just started kind of messaging me and they're like, "Okay, so what's going on with the dating thing or when are you going to start a dating app or like, you know, like just stuff in general. And I'm like, "Okay, I think this is a thing. And then when he announced it on the show, I was like, oh, my goodness. I, I, it was, I literally had people messaging me and they're like, okay, can I get on the list? And I'm like, well, oh, there's a, a list. <laughs> <laughs> they realized there was a list now. So I had to start a list. So I, I do have a list now. So people, you're going to do this? Yes, we are. There and I say go. we because I kind of rolled Melissa into this too. Oh, um, more well, to talk about. Okay. As well as a couple of other girls and then Helm too. I want to get him in the mix of things. Yeah, <laughs> yeah buddy. Me, me. Well, you are single. <laughs> What? You said yeah. you said you needed more horsepower in your love life. <laughs> so you I, I want to know more about the speed because I wasn't I wasn't on that show. So mm-hmm. yeah, and yeah, it's your fault. It'll, no, I mean I'd like to know more about you know how that's going to happen. You know. Yeah, I I you know I've a, I've been researching it a little bit because I don't know anything about it, um, other than like stuff that I've seen on TV shows. Yeah. Um, I think the last one I saw was like the show Dating on the Spectrum. <laughs> I love that show, actually. But Hell, they, that might work out for you, actually. <laughs> they did a they did a speed dating show, I think. So that was I saw that, and so I have these ideas about how we're going to do this, but it's That's tricky. Cool. So the spectrum for this one would be <laughs> no, you know, it would be cars, yeah. right? So you've right. got well, quali- yeah. you got to be some qualifications. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully they're all single yeah. people, right? Well, Not right. Okay. people. We're working on that. We're, yeah. we're working on that, but we have decided that. It's not just going to be car people for the dating thing. It's going to be because I have had some car guys who are like, I don't want to date a car girl, but I'll date somebody else. So maybe you can just have other people on. And I'm like, yeah, I think what we'll do is maybe do like a car meet slash car show in the parking lot of like a brewery. And then because I have a lot of friends who are already married and are dating. So they want to be a part of it, but not necessarily a part of it. So we'll do That's like the cool. car show thing in the parking lot and then go inside maybe a brewery somewhere and sit down and do the speed dating thing inside. Do so. any of the any of the girls uh, the car girls not want to date car guys? Yes. They don't want to Yes. <laughs> Dan, Dan, I think you should go. No, Melissa jumps in real fast. <laughs> Dan is our quote unquote non car guy. <laughs> and he's single, Me. so you qualify, Dan. Yeah. Right, um, there you go. I don't know about the whole I, non-car guy thing, by the way. I don't know. Because you seem no one to know quite that. a bit. Yeah. <laughs> well, when I say I'm not a car guy, what I really mean is I I drive a 2017 Corolla. 
Right. You guys all have cool cars. So you've got, you know, Subarus and <laughs> But S14s. deep down, deep down, yeah. you're a car guy. Well, yeah. I used to be a car guy. I've had BMWs. I had an RX-7. I've had, you know, there I, you I had trucks. I, See? I, too. But, a okay. non-car guy me, that owned an RX-7. Yeah, Hold on. Yeah, right, so man. let me qualify that. There's a huge qualification here. Like, I want a guy who knows cars. I want a guy who can work on cars. I don't want a guy that I'm going to run into every 17 seconds. <laughs> so Helm, you're out. <laughs> um, it can't be somebody that is gonna be every seventeen. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That doesn't work out. Yeah. yeah. Uh, especially... And when you say run into, you don't mean fender bender, right? No. Okay. No, well, right. It definitely can't be one of those guys. <laughs> if you can't drive, uh, mm, all right. Helm, you're definitely out. Mm, that's definitely not gonna work. Okay. Well, I'm excited yeah. because if you end up on like having your own national show at some point, yeah. it started right here in West Oh my I goodness. Know, yeah. Right? yeah. Man. Well, we are going to start up our own Instagram page oh, for it. Yeah. So it's getting legit. Yeah. So it is. yeah. <laughs> but, and, and then you said you're going to start up your podcast again, right? Yes, you're in the works for that, I right? I am. I'm super excited about that. I've had a lot of girls reach out to me who are like, can you interview me? I want to be on wow. your podcast. And I, and it's really kind of jump started me back into like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to get this done. I'm going to do it again. Yeah. So, that's awesome. That's fun. Yeah. I'm excited. Yeah. And we're yeah. totally supportive of that. So anything Absolutely. we can do to help you out, help you out with that. That's awesome. We would, if you need any background items, you can borrow some of these. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have a whole shitload of car stuff yeah, around here. Yeah. It? Yeah, I don't see any pillows. I got, I got the pillows. The <laughs> if you need to borrow Helm, you can have him. <laughs> so if you need some background. Are you, you know. going to be our emotional support? <laughs> yeah, yeah. They can hug you instead of a pillow. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Helm's uncomfortable. He's speechless. I'm blushing. I'm He's blushing. speechless. Yeah. Helm is rarely speechless. I know, right? Wow. <laughs> I was All right, guys. Okay, 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 okay. Okay. So back to the dating app. Yes. So you're in the works and you're yeah. um trying to sort out the details with that. Um Yes. How how does that how, have you thought about like how it'll work with like age and how yeah. people get linked up or so that's the tricky part because I have a lot of friends who date younger or date older. And so I on this list, I have to get people's preference and figure out, okay, do I have two groups at different times mm -hmm. maybe for age, different ages? Um, because some of the car guys that have hit me up, they're probably in their late twenties. Um, and then I have some people in their fifties. So, you know, it just depends, but sometimes people in their fifties like to date people in their twenties. So, oh, yeah, so yeah. It, it's, <laughs> it's tricky. We'll sure. have to figure it out, but yeah. Do you think you can find somebody for helm? Do you think you have, some, you have somebody? Yeah, yeah. especially if Helm yeah. is going to, like, help us with behind the scenes and stuff. Yeah. 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 <laughs> He'll probably have uh, access to the list before everybody else. <laughs> wow. So you can get the pick, dude. <laughs> So much pressure. I know. Nah, nah, so nah, much nah. pressure on the wall. Nah, some, some girl's going to pick you, man. Some yeah. girl's going to pick you. Just don't run. <laughs> you got a new job there, Helen. I know, right? <laughs> All right. All well, right. Okay. That, that ends speed dating or? Yeah, we've, yeah. we've embarrassed Helen. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Okay. So let's turn things over to Melissa Way and Karma Care. So this, uh, I, I was reading up on this and I love what you're doing because, again, we've we had so many discussions about how people should know the basics and that's what you teach. Yeah. So um, I focus on uh, women and teens right now, which I am absolutely willing to teach anybody. I actually just recently taught the Boy Scouts. So, um, but I focus on car care, car maintenance, and emergency preparedness in your vehicle. And um, we go over everything from emergency lights to fluids to changing your tire, inflating your tire. Um, ways to talk to your mechanic. Well, that's a good one. That's, mm -hmm. that's a really that's good key. one. Yeah. yeah. Um, Does it include sound effects? Like it's making the bum, 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 bum sound? <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that what you're trying to avoid? Yeah, so you, you can actually speak exactly, the language? Okay. Exactly. Um, and then we also go over um, things that if you forget everything that I teach in the class, there's another way. <laughs> so that's another tip and trick that I teach. Um, and so these are all things that if you don't learn it when you're young, you can learn it when you're older. And it's an empowerment issue. And mm. and I teach it all in a two and a half hour class. It might be extended to three hours because there's a few more tips and tricks that I want to include. And it's so important. All that information oh, is yeah, so important. For sure. Yeah. I mean, it can save you. You end up on the side of the road. 
take care of it yourself. Yeah. yeah. Well, going, yeah. Exactly. Wait for AAA. Going, going or back to the uh, how to talk to your mechanic. I like that. Not to yeah. be not to be sexist, but is there a different way for a woman to talk to a mechanic and a man? There is. Oh yeah. So we want to hear this. I want to know what that is. So um, the things, some of the things we talk about are asking your mechanic for um, like a digital printout of everything that they do on your car. They can do that with like digital pictures now, mm -hmm. things like that. Um, asking them for the diagnosis ahead of time, but knowing it can change. Going in and researching things that make the polling that you're um, experiencing ahead of time. Asking for those things ahead of time. Um, also asking for your repair part. So asking for the part that they replaced, getting that. Getting that back in a box. Yeah. 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 Um, I heard a story from a girl that was just heartbreaking where she was supposed to get um, a part replaced and they never replaced it. Yeah. And so, I mean, those kinds of stories are just, they're really sad. Yeah. Um, because I think, I think the tides are changing, but women are taken advantage of in this industry. And in every aspect of this industry, not just going into a mechanic, but even women who do know what they're talking about can be chastised and can be, you know, just because this isn't where we're normally seen. And so it's, for me, it's an absolute pleasure to provide women with the education and the knowledge and the tools that we need to just yeah. go in there more empowered. You're not going to know everything after my class, but you're going to have a lot more resources. And some confidence, I would imagine. Yeah. And too. some confidence. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've got two daughters. One's 26, one's 24. And anything that deals with their car, mm -hmm. they call me up, go with me. Can you go with mm -hmm. me? Can you make the phone call? And that's, I'm, it's part of what you're referring to here, just mm -hmm. a lack of confidence, not understanding what they should ask for, not feeling confident in themselves to say the right thing or ask the right question. Right. And, and, you know, if somebody wants to rip you off, they're going to rip you off. <laughs> I it mean, happens that to guys happen. too. Yeah, yeah, it happens to men. Yeah. Um, and it's happened to me when I was younger. Um, but it's just that feeling of I'm, I'm safer on the road. I can get my babies out of the car if there's something that happens to us, if there's a fire, if, if we end up in water somehow. Um, I teach tempered glass versus laminate glass and where you hit that to wow. get out of your car. That's good. Um, there's just, there's some really cool secrets. Um, when, when the, um, the ground is canted, um, uh, when they pave the streets, um, there's certain uh, pavement that you can search for to see where the water is landing when you're in rain. And you don't want to drive in the far left lane. Yeah. You're more likely to hydroplane. These are secrets that aren't secrets, but people don't know them. Yeah. Um, that's one that I haven't taught in class yet, but I'm going to introduce, which is why my class is going to have to start to get longer. Mm. Uh, that's a new tip from Karma Care uh, introduced there you on, go. on this yeah. podcast. Yeah. So yeah. there you go. Um, but these are just some things that people don't know because it's not introduced in schools anymore. It's not no. introduced in anything. And these are just secrets that people need to know to keep safe. Yeah. We get a lot of rain in California. We don't have a lot of drainage. Um, these aren't things I would have taught in Denver when I started this company because that wasn't the stuff that we were focused on. We were focused on snow and ice and how to stay free. You Real know, weather. How to keep from free. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> how to keep from freezing in between. You know, your trip from Denver to Aspen. Mm -hmm. um, and so, but here there's different issues, and so now I'm focused on okay. Do what kind of tires now I'm getting into what kind of tires should I be recommending to these women because we do get rain. So don't get summer tires for everything because no. those aren't going to help you. Um, and so some of this stuff is some of the stuff I'm starting to dive a little deeper in and and start to maybe create some new classes for How'd people. you come up with the idea for this? To say what the world needs this. Yeah. So how did um, you come up with that? I came up with this idea in like 2016 in Denver, Colorado. I started, um, I got really sick. Uh, I had back surgeries and um, 
I got staph infection from the hospital in my spinal cord. Oh. And it took out my ability to walk. I lost Scary. all of the, the feeling in my left leg. Wow. Took out all my ability to walk. And um, I had to do a lot of rehab. And I made it my job. I decided I didn't want to be a social worker anymore. <laughs> That's it, That was my big... I, I died on the operating table. And I decided I didn't want to be... Um, a social worker anymore. And I didn't made my job, uh, going to the track every weekend for autocross. I looked up what my car could do because I started doing, um, rehab for my left leg on my clutch. I just go out and sit in my, <laughs> my car oh, and push cool. on my clutch and push yeah. on my clutch and push on my clutch. And so I looked up what my little WRX could do and it could do autocross. And I was like, well, this isn't super expensive. <laughs> Mm. Okay, well, it's a little more expensive than I thought. <laughs> you know, whatever. Tires, it turns out, are a little pricey. Yeah. Um, and so I started doing that and I started to learn more about my car. And I've always been a driver, but I've never been a driver. I've always been a, I can fucking drive. But I've never been a, I can fuck it. <laughs> yeah. and so i was like no this is what i've always wanted to do i wanted to be a i wanted to be a formula one driver when i was little my dad just didn't tell me that that takes a lot of money <laughs> money i didn't have yeah. um and so i just made that my job and then i started finding out about stuff and i was like you know i don't i didn't have somebody who taught me as much about my car you know, my dad, my grandpa was a renter, but my dad wasn't. He was a driver and he taught me how to drive. And I needed to learn some of those basics. And he was really, really busy. So he didn't teach me some of those basics. I learned a lot of that stuff on my own. Hmm. And then I realized a lot of people don't know that stuff. Hmm. And they should. And they should. Yeah. Yeah. And I can teach them that stuff. It's it's not hard to learn. But women are scared because I was scared. I was out there on that track learning this stuff on the fly. I learned how to put my in the fender liner back I'm under under my car <laughs> with zip ties <laughs> in the parking lot of the Pepsi Center back when it was the Pepsi Center because uh, it came out one day <laughs> while I was driving <laughs> to a hockey game. Yeah. Yeah. And it fell down because I had hit it with a cone uh, earlier in the day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I was learning stuff on the fly all the time, and I thought, this is, this is something I need to get done. I need to learn this stuff. I need to learn it solid. And I learn better from a person. I don't learn as well on the Internet or YouTube University. I I thank the Lords for university, mm -hmm. <laughs> the university of YouTube. I do, but I learn from people. Yeah. And, and if I can make those, those relationships with women and, and teens and get them all, you know, stoked up and confident, I'm willing to do that. Um, right now I'm doing those classes for free. Uh, they're subsidized by my social work. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, that's what I'm doing. Wow. That's exciting. And, and you do more than just that, because I was looking. I was looking at your website. You actually get people out there, and I mean, just besides maintenance, you get them yeah. on the track. Yeah. Well, so what we do, um, so we have three levels right now. Um, we have the prep. We have Karma Care One Hundred and One, which is basic car care, and then we're putting together a prep to track and a prep to drift. Okay. And so those are classes that we are teaming up with different um, groups. Uh, we just talked to um, Grid Life and their – was it Grid Life? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, Grid Life. <laughs> I just need to make sure I have my names right. <laughs> um, and they are helping us put together um, some classes because they're giving us space for free, which is the most – amazing thing in the whole world so thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you um free space is such a blessing in this in this arena right now and and having lifts and things like that mm -hmm. um but they um we're we're getting people put together to give girls presentations on how to prep your car where what tools do you need to have to go to the track where does your head need to be? What are you looking for as the track day continues? What do you need to change on your car as the track day continues? Your tires change. 
the conditions of the track change? How is that going to change your performance? You're not competing against anyone. You're competing against yourself. And you are learning. Don't forget you're learning. This isn't to compete. This mm-hmm. is to learn. Mm-hmm. And just have fun. And to have a yeah. good time. Yeah. Now, a lot of this is sounding familiar. So I'm guessing yeah. you two kind of connected over this. Or you were <laughs> friends. Did you guys know each other before? And then you guys have joined forces? How's was, how was all that coming together? Um, yeah. So she and I have been friends for a couple of years now. And then... Um, she has the the track days and and my hope was to prep the girls for the track days mm-hmm. um, because she hosts them and she does such an incredible job hosting track days. Um, <laughs> and she's my she's my <laughs> my track wife, basically. Track wife, <laughs> she's right. my car wife. <laughs> uh, she's I don't you know, I have um, I have a lot of car friends that are women, but she's been so uh, instrumental to me getting this started in California because I um, I came from Denver, you know, so yeah. yeah. Right. And I had her on the podcast, my podcast. So oh. that's kind of like where. We originally first kind of like formed our bond, I think, was on my mm. podcast. Oh, nice. Because yeah. you had mentioned uh, back when you were on the show, Christina, that um, a lot of these women who might be intimidated, you know, for, you know, obvious reasons about being on the track and having an unfamiliar arena, but also being a woman in a male dominated thing. So you're obviously finding a lot of that with the students that you're teaching. So there's a lot of similarities with. You know, they kind of go hand in hand, I guess, you know, not just the track, but also just car maintenance and car knowledge in general. Right. Right. Absolutely. So when you teach them, um, do you see that change in them right away where uh, they don't have that insecurity as much or do you feel like it's kind of lingering or? Um, I think that they don't have that insecurity as much um, and they also feel so much more open to asking questions Mm. and seeking out more information because not only do I provide them with the information up hand or off (laughs) up front off hand, um, but um, also I, I let them call me again. Like they have access to me. And so if they have more questions, they can call me, but also I provide them with tons of resources. Mm. This is how you find out more. This now you know about a tire, and now you know about filling up your tire. I I give them hands on, tons of hands on. So this is they get to break their lugs with a breaker bar. They torque them. That was pretty funny because they were bouncing on that breaker bar. They were oh, bouncing on that take breaker bar. My tire off my car. <laughs> Um, but it was legit. That's the stuff they have to get used yeah. to. Sure. And they're little tiny girls trying to bounce. They're like, it's not moving. Put put yourself into it. You yeah. got it. Yeah. You got yeah. it. Um, <laughs> and then, um, but they they find out tools that they need. So they learn about tools too, which is amazing. Um, but they just, they get involved. And they, I think it, it also sparks kind of a curiosity in them to say, okay, this is what I know. Is there anything else I need to know? And, and now I know I can, I can move a tire. I can put a new tire on. Is there anything else I want to know about tires? Mm. Um, and, and I give them, you know, the best websites that I have available that explain these things to them because the honest truth is, is, I do have my master's degree in social work and I have looked up the range of learning time that you have their attention. You know, you're not going to have their attention for six hours. Mm. They get worn out and they're done. So I try to keep my class between two and a half and three hours. Three hours is the max that you're going to get them really before they're full. They're full. Yeah. They're not going to get any more in there. The sponge has been filled. Yeah, exactly. But your classes are hands-on. Like they'll be... Doing things, not just sitting there in a classroom taking that's notes. True. They're actually yeah. physically they are, doing things, they right? They are physically yeah. doing. I think things. that's a huge thing because, yeah. like, yeah. Said, yeah. learning on YouTube is one thing, but yeah. getting your hands on yes. the parts and doing the she things. She even had on the table vials of all the fluids, so they could see what the fl- oh. fluids look like. The what color, look yeah. at color. Them. Yeah. yeah, and she explained them that's and cool. how to how to check them. Um, and hands-on stuff like that is really important. I've found, especially for women, they're very. 
touchy feely, like talking, and and they mm. they loved that. That was one of the things that they mentioned. Yeah, tactile. Yeah. Melissa, are you um are you seeing any kind of conversion rate where women come in? Maybe they're a little timid, and they take your class and they get into it. Maybe they follow up with you a little bit, and pretty soon they're turning into Melissa's and Christina's, <laughs> where they're car women. Are you um, seeing that? A little bit. I I had a couple. Um, there's there's one woman who wants to take the class on uh, Saturday, but she's going to the Grand Prix, mm. and it's her first Grand Prix, and she's really excited. And so <laughs> she's like, "Can I please take the following class?" So she already signed up for the following class, um, but she's like, "I I really want to go to the Grand Prix." <laughs> and I was like, "Girl, I understand. I'm going to the Grand Prix on Friday, so I get it." Um, and so I signed her up for the following class. So yeah, I get it. Yeah. Um, so we have some of that happening where people are really excited about it or another interesting trend, actually, that's more, um, I have car girls signing up for the class where they were like, you know, there's some stuff I just don't know. And I want to learn that stuff. And I also have some stuff that car girls don't know and car guys don't know. (laughs) And it's good stuff. It's good stuff. 511. Guys don't know 511. So I didn't know that either. I watched your last class when you had it at my shop. Yeah. And I learned a few things. I did not know about 511. I thought was yeah. Yeah, 511 is the is the um the number that you call if you need roadside assistance on any California highway. Oh, you can get okay. a gallon of gas. They'll help you change it. That was the secret that I said earlier if y'all were listening. <laughs> hey, this is a reason to keep the podcast going. <laughs> I might throw in some callbacks. It's another secret. Um, keep keep dangling yeah. that carrot. Yeah. That's <laughs> right. Um I'll throw in some callbacks. 511 if you need gas or your tire changed, or a tow to a, a location. Oh, I keep hitting this. I'm so sorry. Okay. Um, you're you're, you're a, taking my lead. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, a call, a, a location, a tow to a location. Um, they will do that for free. For free. I'm canceling my AAA. Yeah. After yeah. The show. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Helm could have used that. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, yesterday or the yeah. day before? The other day. Yeah. I could have yeah. yeah. used that because my alternator went out and oh. I had to call up my AAA. You oh. have to be on a California highway. Oh, I mean, highway. They, yeah. I, so yeah. it is oh. a, hi- a highway oh. thing. Oh, okay. Ventura Boulevard is yeah. not so a highway. Right? It's not a highway. <laughs> it's part so of the do keep your AAA. And one thing, you can't be picky on gas because they probably only have one ticket. Helm, don't call them. Yeah. It's not Chevron. I know, right? Tech Ron. Yeah. Sorry. Don't run out of E85 yeah, while you're exactly. on the highway. No. But that is that is great. And they only know. give you one oh. gallon for real. Oh, okay. For real. To get to the next exit. Or yeah. Right. To get to the, yeah. yeah. Um, because I had a friend tell me last weekend um, that he ran out of gas twice and had to call them. Oh my gosh. Jeez. In the get, same day? Didn't get enough gas, right? Yeah, because yeah. they gave, oh, they gave no. him a gallon <laughs> no. and then he had to call him again to get another gallon to get to the gas station. Oh my gosh. So they really do give you a gallon. Oh my gosh. Wow. Yeah, f- oh. for real. Okay. Um, oh, wow. So, but that's 511. And oh. so when you're in a crunch on a highway, use 511. And those are the signs that they are on the side they of the freeway. They are on the you side just, of the freeway. You never, never pay attention. Them. You just but never, yeah. they're like the speed limit signs for me. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> they're invisible sometimes. Do you feel like it's kind of like um, the uh, the thing where like a man won't ask for directions but a woman will? Do you feel like that kind of like stereotype is actually not a stereotype? It's actually kind of true that a lot – because I know plenty of guys. I'm sure you do too, Christina, that think they know everything about mm. cars – and they don't. They know enough to be dangerous, but if you, they won't actually do the work or can't do the actual work. Do you find a lot of that kind of like I don't know if it's machismo or some kind of like ego thing that I want to make it look like I know what I'm talking about, mm-hmm. but I don't. Because uh, I feel like there's guys that should take that class too that just no, don't know the basics about cars. Um, you know what's funny is most of the guys that I've talked to about this class who I've told some of the secrets to, they've all actually been pretty open. They're like, yeah, I should take your class. Yeah. Hmm. Um, yeah. I think do I, they? I think they, they just want to <laughs> meet other women probably. probably. Yeah. That's, um, that's the first thing I was thinking. I'm, I'm not going to have a mixed class. If it, if I have a guy's class, yeah. I'm going to have an all guys yeah. class. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's probably better um, that way. Yeah. I, want, I want the women to have the women's experience. That's yeah. what I provide for them. Well, so I will have a guy's class and I'm happy to have one. I have a hair on my lip. 
Um, <laughs> well, but if, I'm happy to have one, but it's going to be for guys. If you had a mixed class, then you'd be competing with speed dating. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So you can't do that. And I don't need any hanky panky going on yeah. in the back of the classroom. Yeah. It's well, distracting. Also, do you think yeah. like the women might be intimidated because there's guys in the class to actually ask a yeah. question? Yes. Yeah. Because you mentioned Absolutely. that before. Yeah. 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 I don't know what and it is I, too when women are all together. For some reason, it's just it's a, this camaraderie thing. It's very like you know, you know. Oh, she asked a question. I'm gonna ask a question. I'm gonna ask a question. It's like very like everybody just kind of amps each other up. That's they what do. I That's noticed. Cool. Yeah. yeah, they really do. I think it'd be fun if you took that class. I'm gonna just yeah. get some knowledge of of. Um, you know, basic car. So, because he was asking about his alternator, you know, um, you know, why he made a comment the other day is about why can't they just seal the alternator? I was like, well, it's a moving part. You can't just seal it from because yeah, uh, yeah. his mechanic was saying that you know because the heavy the rain. rains and the water mm-hmm. getting there ruined the alternator. But well, that was the original yeah. alternator that, yeah. and that was a, a great takeaway. Was that I thought I'd replaced it a while back, but it was original alternator. So thirty years oh, of my wow. classic. Wow. I'm like, we're good. We need a. Sure. We need to get a new one. Wow. Yeah. So I wasn't mad at that, but no. um, but also uh, to to add to that is your recommendation with the e brake. How I implemented that. To oh. Where, okay. <laughs> no, explain them. Like, you know, well, no, like, I, I I had told Helm. You know, we were he. Let me drive his car one day. Oddly enough, I surprised. Of course, <laughs> of course, I couldn't adjust the seat or anything, so I'm driving like because I measure. I, oh. uh, right. That was the other thing I was going to talk about was ergonomics in your vehicle, which is huge. That's huge. Yeah. It's huge. huge. That is huge. Which That's the I other learned. reason I want to expand it for yeah. to three hours is I do mm. want to talk about ergonomics That's, in your vehicle yeah, because key. it can be dangerous if you're too close to the steering wheel. You're going to get whacked by your. Uh, Airbag. Airbag. Yeah. Yeah. And it can be yeah. really harmful. Yeah. Oh, you need huge. to be an arm's length away from your steering wheel. Yeah, and don't kiss the steering wheel. Yeah, yeah no. exactly. I saw my I saw my uh Lyft driver do it this morning. I got my windshield replaced. I left my thing and and the <laughs> Uber driver was driving like this. And I was like, I yeah. see a lot of people speaking anyway, Uber. Yeah, Uber keep talking about the yeah. Miata. Go for well, it. <laughs> Sorry. Well, no, he was he was he was I was driving his car. It's a you know older Mercedes. Oh, and Mercedes. uh and uh I I parked it and I put the e-brake on and then, you know, put it in parking. He goes, what'd you do that for? I was like, well, because so you don't have to be resting on the trans. Right. And he's like, what? And now <laughs> he's in Helm. Sorry, I don't mean to be OCD. Oh, yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. You're I, literally. It's like, so now it's he's like, the, like the uh, e-brake Nazi. Like, I've been, yeah. so, I, I, I've been putting all that strain on my transmission. Well, yeah. So yeah. It's yeah. 30 years old. I need to, I need to kind of dial back. So every time it's like, boom, I have a whole. I have Good a thing whole, you don't drive a manual. I, I have a whole routine. Right. And so now it's like, boom, I put so, that. You so can call it a ritual. So be, before this. <laughs> yeah, though, exactly. Before this, though, so you'd park and then you'd wait for it to go. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah exactly. And you feel yeah. it kind of, and now yeah. I now I feel yeah. guilty that I was putting that strain exactly because he doesn't oh. know that what it's resting on. He thinks it's resting on the brake. I'm like, no, yeah. that's, oh, that's, that's the transmission, buddy. On your transmission. Yeah. See? yeah, yeah. So yeah. he definitely, okay. you know, yeah. I mean, and, and and you're right. He learned because I told him directly, at, you know, one on one. He could have YouTubed it. Not that he would have, yeah, but yeah. he could. But he, but why? So I do yeah. think that that personal that's, connection that. Yeah. Eye contact, yeah. that right. physical, that tactile thing is a huge, huge thing. Why yeah. I'm not, I'm like I said, I've done plenty of things to look up stuff on YouTube, but learning, I learn from other people working on the yeah. cars with right. me, showing me how to do it. And I, you trust yeah. those other people. Yeah. And that's yeah. another thing. Sorry. Uh, you trust those other people. And that's the thing that's important is I try to build trust with my clients. I talk to them. I talk to them about what I've done. I've talked to them about the mistakes I've made and what I've learned. And how I've learned it. Because it's important to make mistakes and that's how you do learn. And it's important to know who you're learning from. Yeah, exactly. Because people can tell you anything on the internet. Yeah, exactly. And that's why YouTube University can be a real dangerous place. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. I'm accountable for what I say. Um, I'm not accountable for... <laughs> I'm not accountable for all the crazy shit you do with it afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'll tell you how to do stuff. You go doing all some crazy finagling shit. I'm not accountable for all that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but you do sign a waiver saying that if you decide to do some crazy shit with all the information I give you, then that's on you. Yeah. But I am accountable for what I say. So mm-hmm. when I tell you that you do not want to be right here with your steering wheel and a big old balloon hitting your face at mm-hmm. 60 miles an hour, then don't do that. Yeah. Because yeah. that's dumb. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so, 
Yeah, I like, that's why I really like the in-person. Yeah. It's, it's a real connection. And 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 I've always liked in-person stuff. That's just yeah. the way I roll. I like to meet people. I, I've always liked my auditions in person. I'm real bent out of shape over all these taped auditions. They make yeah. me kind of grumpy. <laughs> but, uh, I like to connect with people. That's just the but, way what, I am. What I see ironic about this is that when you talked about you being on the surgery table and you and you quit your 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 <laughs> job as a social worker, you're still doing social work. You're still being, no, 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 but you're being of service to the community still, yeah. you see? So in that realm, it's kind of like translated into your career still in this new arena, but you're still being of service. And I think that's a great thing that you're, you're, you're providing for the community with, with the knowledge and the wisdom that you're, you're sharing. You're, you know? you're building karma. Yeah, you don't, yeah. <laughs> Good karma. Yeah. Oh, I'm Good. sorry. What's the name of the company again? Karma it's Care. called Karma I Care with so, okay. a C. <laughs> <laughs> See, I yeah. try to subtly work that yeah. stuff in there, but yeah. Yeah. Good must, call must plug this. <laughs> Mr. Marketing, <laughs> CJ. <Jeez. laughs> you know, uh, the, the, the question that you asked, Dan. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt okay. you. Uh, the question that you asked, Dan, I feel like maybe that question should be asked to Christina because mm -hmm. when you get girls that come out to the track day, mm -hmm. do they ever ask you afterwards, like, hey, how can I? fix this myself or how can I do something to my car to make it more reliable for the track or for whatever, almost like, and then you send them to <laughs> Melissa's yeah. thing, because I feel like, you know, you usually don't need to fix something until you break it. Right. If you're not thinking correctly, but on the track, obviously you're going to break something a lot more easier yeah, or yeah. have more, uh, have it having it happen, happen more often. Do you think any of the girls that you experience out there might, want to get into those kinds of classes. Yes. After that. And what's actually funny about that is I've had numerous girls who are gearing ready, like getting ready to go to a track day with me. And they'll ask me, okay, what do I need to do? What do I need to like prep? Like what, what should I bring? What, what should I look for? Um, and so I've, I have the habit of like, I break it all down for them, but now it's kind of nice because it's like, well, you know, we're going to do this class. So we're trying to set it up where, like, if she knows I have a track day, she's going to do a class, like, the day before or the mm. weekend before or whatever. Um, and so that's been kind of nice because that helps a lot with prep. Mm -hmm. um, but also, too, what's funny is after track days, because 95% of the time people love track days so much they want to do it again, they – will start to really beef things up and they they will start to do a lot more to their car. Um, and then I can kind of connect them to the right people, mm -hmm. you know, like sometimes uh, if I have a sponsor I'm working with or something, um, they'll ask questions and be like, what do I need to do? How do I do this? And it's kind of nice because there's always this progression um, that I see with the women out, out on track days. But yeah, they always start somewhere. They need some sort of prep, and and it's great that now Melissa can help yeah. with that. So yeah, that's, that's super cool. One that's of cool. the things too I have to say about her class that I thought was really cool, and I don't know if I told you this, but um, her first class she did at my shop, and I I watched, I partaked a little bit, kind of in the background. One of the things I really loved was that she has the girls get their owners' manuals out and sit down and like go through the owner, like they really familiarize themselves with the owner's manual and not a lot of people even touch their owner's manual. Or know that they even have one. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that was kind of cool because they're sitting at the table and they're like going through and they're That's like, cool. they're like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> so that was really, So the really cool. they can find the information on their own if they need to. It's yeah, all right exactly. there in the glove box. Exactly. Yeah. It is. It really yeah. is. I think people it's the biggest surprise. That. Yeah. The biggest surprise people notice uh, that, this information on maintaining a car is in the actual yeah. manual. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, I think that's pretty interesting. That people don't know that. I mean, I, yeah. I still look at mine all the time. Sometimes it's for, you know, just sometimes air pressure. Right. It's like, okay, how many, what, what's the air pressure on this tire? You know? Yeah. And yeah. so, you know, I, you'd think you'd know it. And, yeah. You know, but if it isn't, you need to ch double check. Yeah. Check the. That's actually on my uh, is my that Instagram. Yeah, uh, I I show all the places that you can find air pressure in your the car. Door yeah, jams, it's a the lot. door jams, yeah. the gas tank, yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. The, the the cover for the gas tank. Yeah. Yeah. Or like through. when you need to get new bulbs for your lights, I look at my owner's manual. Okay, which ones do I need? I go over to O'Reilly's and get yeah. my bulbs. So yeah, yeah. Cool. I remember growing up. Um, you know, hanging out with a bunch of street racers and stuff, and I remember talking to the older guy about. I asked a, a question that I thought was pretty simple, but I got the whole like, you 
fucking pansy. You don't know what the hell you talk. You know, I mean, as a, as a young guy, I was like, oh, yeah, sorry. I, know. Yeah, I totally knew what you're saying. Oh. You know, and then from then uh, that point on, I had to act the part. Yeah. And then I became what I was called a, a brocanic. Like, where I was like, I thought I could fix stuff, but I, I just broke stuff I because I didn't know what I was doing. You know, until I got around people that were like, no, 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 this is how you do it, dude. Because I would a ask questions. Family. And I feel like this is not just for women. I know women deal with it and they have to deal with a lot of other things that men don't have to deal with. But yeah. men have to deal with this stuff. I think there's a lot of guys out there that want to learn. And I got to applaud the guys that, like, you know, are afraid to go um to shops to get ripped off or whatever and mm -hmm. then they try to learn it on their own mm -hmm. of course you know breaking a lot of eggs uh break, you know to make that omelet but i feel like it's important for people to be asking questions i think that's the thing mm -hmm. that is really really cool and maybe coming from a woman maybe it's, it's easier to ask you a question i'm not trying to be sexist but you yeah. know sometimes guys have a problem asking other guys questions yeah yeah you know so at least i can mm -hmm. i thought so so yeah yeah um i've had the the i worked with the boy scouts for a little while and um and i'll be working with them again and the the young men there did great they they all participated they all asked questions um and it was a great a great workshop that we did with them. And so I look forward to working with them again. Do they earn a Karma Care badge? <laughs> <laughs> I should make that. I'm actually working with the Girl Scouts um, I, they, to get one of their car badges. Uh, the Girl Scouts um, not a bad will idea. earn a car badge <laughs> through me. Dan, you worked with the, the Cub Scouts and Boy Scouts before, right? Yeah, I was going to bring that up, Melissa. I was a, a shotgun instructor up at Camp Three Falls, which is Lockwood Valley, which okay. is, which is they actually just shut it down, unfortunately. But when my son was in Scouts, mm -hmm. uh, I was a shotgun instructor, and I've taught probably, I don't know, 1,000, 1,500 kids how to hit a clay with a shotgun. Okay. And I was going to say, at the end of the day, usually the boys would be dragged off to do, you know, awards and stuff like that and the parents would be around and i gotta say it was a really interesting experience instructing women how to shoot who had never touched a gun mm -hmm. versus guys mm -hmm. and it was exactly what gabe was alluding to it's like guys have this thing of like yeah, i know it's like do you know the ba four basic rules of gun safety yeah i know and then they're not doing it <laughs> and women yeah. women i would teach them and i love instructing <laughs> women over men because women listen yeah, yeah. they just listen yeah. and they'll do what you tell them and it may or may not work but at least they listen and they try yeah and it's very gratifying you know, when a woman's like, I've never even touched a gun and 10 minutes later, she's busting a clay. It's like, that's, I love that yeah. as an instructor and they love it too. So I just wondered, did you ever experience that where women are kind of timid and then pretty soon they're just like, they're nailing it. And it's like, they listen. Wow. Um, best example I have is that, um, we take apart the car and we put the car back together mm. and, uh, I've had my car taken apart by women and I've had my car taken apart by men and put back together, so to speak. And um, my car wasn't really drivable after it was put back together by men. Wow, wow. <laughs> oh, man. And it definitely was when it was put back together by there women. There going to be some arguments oh. in the comments oh. for this one. Oh. Arguments uh, coming, I feel it. Um, Miss, but, missing but, bolts. But, missing but here's, it, it, wasn't, it, wasn't, it wasn't anything except for the 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 boys um versus the girls they just kind of were like yeah we're tired of inflating uh we don't really want to get it up to specs so we're done now mm. <laughs> whereas and the it's women 15 were pounds. like yeah we were, <laughs> yeah no joke seriously yeah. i'm not joking uh <laughs> the women were told to deflate it mm -hmm. uh down six pounds and reflate it six pounds because I knew exactly what my tires were at before. Mm -hmm. The boys were told the exact same thing. Now there there's a slight difference in age too. So mm -hmm. let's let's recognize that. Not a huge difference in age. Mm -hmm. We're talking like maybe but it's significant because these were 17 and 18 and we're talking probably the age range on the other group I did was 20, 19 and 20. Okay. So pretty so, close. Yeah. Pretty close. Mm. <laughs> big, big, big difference, huh? Big di well, I had to retorque all of my bolts. Oh man! Well, it, or, 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 I'm sorry, all my lugs. I retorqued yeah. all the lugs, and then I had to re, re um, fill all of my tires, well, reinflate well, them all. It, it's interesting now because girls are in Boy Scouts now, as we all know, or, or as you may not know. Yeah, 
Boy, Boy Scouts was they, opened up to in, girls. Shouldn't they be in Girl Scouts? No, a lot of girls want to go in Boy Scouts because they say Girl Scouts does, you know, cookie oh, baking. Mm. And they do bake cooler sales. shit in the Boy Scouts. Exactly. Uh, and and I've experienced that because my son made Eagle, so he was in it for the long haul and so mm-hmm. on. And we went to a place called uh, Philmont Scout Ranch, which is in New Mexico, 300,000 acre scout ranch that's in New Mexico. It's a working cattle ranch. Mm-hmm. And I got to meet lots of girls there that were, you know, 17, 18, and they're out riding. They had different kinds of scouts. They had like horse scouts, cavalry mm-hmm. scouts. Mm-hmm. And it, it was really interesting to see. I mean, at first, I was kind of against it. And now it's kind of like, no, I get it, man. Girls, a lot of girls do want to go out and do the cool shit that the guys get mm-hmm. to do. And girl, not the Girl Scouts is bad. It's just it's a different vibe. It's just mm-hmm. a whole different thing. Sure. Yeah. And I, I do think it's been overall a good thing. Mm-hmm. So, no, yeah. that, that, that makes sense. That yeah. makes sense. Yeah. yeah. It uh, yeah, so it was. I, I I'm not slamming on on the boys. They just didn't. Yeah. They didn't really want to finish doing what we were doing yeah. when we yeah. were doing it. They were kind of like, oh, okay, we're done. They could have done it. Like, they could have done they it. They just did. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. They're absolutely capable. They just weren't absolutely motivated. Absolutely yeah. capable. They weren't motivated to finish the job. Right. Kind of right. like a lot of mechanics that, <laughs> that, that we've experienced. I mean, I've had plenty of mechanics that didn't do, and not just that, but fabricators and engine oh. builders. And, you know, when it comes to the aftermarket, as you know, Christina, mm. the pickings get a lot slimmer, mm-hmm. you know. So yeah. we find that I find that out a lot, too. How to How to talk to a fabricator. Or an engine yeah. builder who does yeah. yeah. I think maybe I might have just recognized some of the difference. You know, um, boys get this opportunity all the time to do this kind of stuff. Mm. Mm-hmm. They get this opportunity all the time to be around cars, to mess with cars, to tinker with them. Mm. Women don't get this opportunity as often True. to mess with them, to tinker with them, to do yeah. this in a non judgmental environment. And yeah. so those women were just railing to go they were like let's do this i want to do this let's mm-hmm. get it done That's and cool. they did finish the job and they were like yeah let's do it let's what do we get to do next mm-hmm. you know and so i think that might be kind of the difference in the genders when it comes to like participating in my program um is just you know guys are like yeah, well, you know it's a car <laughs> uh, I've, I've, I've got a question for you melissa <laughs> yeah. um, i've got a daughter she's uh-huh. she's in her late 20s mm-hmm She's great. Yeah. Um, un- unlike CJ's daughters, that she's she's yes. never been interested like. in like I I showed her all that stuff. I showed her how to change a tire, how to change the oil back when we were all changing our own oil and all uh-huh. that. And you know, I, I always joke with her. I'm like, so your idea of car maintenance is when it explodes, then you do something about it. <laughs> <laughs> so so do you have any tips or tricks for those of us who have women in our lives who are like that, who are just like. You show them they're just not interested, and it's just, oh, my my car stopped working. Like, how, how do you get around that? <laughs> There's really not a way to get around that because it, the – the bottom line is if they want to do it, they're going to do it. And if they don't, they don't. Yeah. And, and there's things that I don't like in this world. Like, I just don't like sending a ton of emails to people. That's mm-hmm. not my idea of a good time. Mm-hmm. And I really <laughs> hate doing my, my web page. Like, I mm-hmm. really hate doing my web page. Um, so I get taxes. the... Taxes. I'm actually pretty good at those. You like doing the taxes? I don't specifically really, like I'll send it. you mine. I'll send you mine. <laughs> you got another sideline for your business. All right. All right. All right. Um, but I would say when it comes to safety, safety is where I start to say, okay, this is something I got to do. Mm-hmm. You know, like we also don't like going to the doctor, but when it comes to you've got to attend to your shit, yeah. that is where I draw a line. Mm-hmm. And safety is where you've got to draw a line. And so when I say this is the way you get your children out of a freaking car mm-hmm. when it's on fire, mm-hmm. people start to perk up. Yeah, yeah. for yeah. sure. And when sense. I say... Um, you need to know how to keep yourself safe in terms of you could have a perpetrator. This is, this is where women and men differ. This is a matter of my personal safety because men perpetrate on not not all men. Not all men. Not all men. <laughs> <laughs> be careful. Be careful. Be careful. Men can perpetrate on women who are weak. And sure. And women who cannot protect themselves in those situations or at least pretend like they know what they're doing can be perpetrated on. And I refuse to be perpetrated on in terms of putting myself in a position of weakness in that situation. Mm-hmm. 
I find myself in positions of weakness all the fucking time. Mm-hmm. I'm already in them all the time. So why put myself in another position of weakness, mm-hmm. you know? Um, so I try to put myself in positions of knowledge wherever I can. And that's where I try to phrase it for women. Listen, if this is a position where you can be in a position of knowledge, why not? I'm giving it to you for free. Well, I loved your accountability thing, like the checklist and the parts and the digital photos and so on. It's like that, that is a great tip for it anyone. Is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because so many people take their car to the mechanic and they just take their word for it mm-hmm. or service center, uh, you know, at the profit center, as we all know, who've been <laughs> in the car business, <laughs> right. it's the profit center. Right. And, uh, and it's fine. And usually people are pretty good, but we've all been ripped off. Right. Right. So that's, I, I think that's great. You should, that should be taught to everyone. That makes me wonder, Christina, because you've been doing this for such a long time in the car game, you know, uh, not just as a car, this, but, you know, racing, mm-hmm. uh, going to the track and all that stuff. And back when, you know, you were doing it back at Battle of the Imports and all that, there was like, like, what, uh, less than a handful of female racers that were kind of like known doing yeah. this stuff. And mm-hmm. it was like 99% male dominated. Yeah. Did you experience a lot of this stuff, especially in the aftermarket and the racing scene? What was it like for you kind of coming up at, at that time? Because and, and would you compare that to today? Like what the difference is? Way different today. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Way different. Um, I mean, even just coming out of high school and already, you know, drag racing and stuff like that, I, I learned everything from men. I didn't have a woman to help me or guide me. I looked up to certain people like Lisa Kubo. I'd sit and watch her wrench on her car, and that was inspiring enough to know that I could do it. But I didn't have a lot of help. I I really just kind of put myself out there and just kind of learned and was taught by my ex. So he showed me a lot of stuff about cars. So, yeah, there was, like, nobody inspiring back then. Nowadays, it's just completely different. Yeah. Um it we like we had this program on Friday that Melissa and I went to at Formula Drifts where it was called Women of FD and uh, Z who's a prospect dr- drifter um, she hosted this event where like we had like thirty women who got to spend the whole day behind the scenes and had all these amazing women in the industry give us speeches and tell us about racing and like even just people like Amanda Sorensen she's huge in the industry she gave a little speech and Shelby Craxton who is the head of James Dean's um oh she's amazing mechanics she's yeah she's talked about because his his car had caught on fire earlier like two days prior to the race so Mm -hmm. it was it, it was amazing there's so much support now. It's it's such a difference than 20 years ago. Yeah. Um, just to have somebody stand up and be like, I'm going to bring all these women and I'm going to show them this and and support them in this. And like I was extremely grateful that I could be a part of it. But um, there was also a part of me that I kind of didn't want to take somebody else's space away from them because I was so excited that there was this person willing to take all these women in and show them the behind the scenes. I mean, photographers too. And like, it was, it was, were you able to bring some of the younger women that you know to the event to? No, it was a, it was an uh, invite. Well, we had to actually apply for it. So she picked certain people to be a part of it. So Mm. I met a ton of new car girls um, or like I said, some were photographers or people who are just working in the industry and, uh, or a lot of girls who had not even raced yet, they were just so excited about it and wanted to kind of get the feel for things before they started up. So that was pretty amazing. That was such a great day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I am forever grateful to Z for putting that together. Yeah. So. I mean, have, and there's a, a handful of uh, female uh, drifters in that se- series, right? Or is, is there, there's a couple. She's not the only one, is there? It's Amanda Sorensen, Zendara Kennedy, and... Um, I don't know what Colette is in. I don't know what series she's in when she races, Colette Davis. Um, she's big in the industry for drifting, but there was another girl. Um, well, Morgan drifts, but she's not a pro spec um, driver. A, I have her name on the tip of my tongue. <laughs> uh, Ra- 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 Rollinson? Ra- <laughs> well, so I mean, we'll get it and we'll put a graphic up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, we'll get we'll it. We'll just right. cut that in. Yeah. But no, I mean, it, I feel so bad because 
like but I, a lot I know of, her. <laughs> there's a lot of female mechanics back there behind the scenes working on the That's cars cool. with the with the guys and then there's a lot of the the wives there who are like spotters and like oh, wow. it's yeah. it was awesome um to see so I didn't really wrap my head around how much women really are involved yeah. in everything yeah. so and that, that's so encouraging for me as a you know uh i have a young daughter and if she's gets interested in cars i would love for her to at least know that she doesn't have to worry about being intimidated or judged she can go learn and be these things whether it you know is a hobby or as a profession yeah. you know it's cool to just see that and i really yeah. do appreciate those yeah. types of yeah. things so Absolutely. it's really cool that, that yeah. those things exist yeah it was you know? pretty cool we even had um i forgot her name but there's a couple of women there. One was from uh, Rockstar. She does like the PR Jen. marketing. Jen, yeah. She talked about kind of that side of the industry mm. and how um, kind of like the best things to do to get your foot in the door. Oh, wow. it, it was great. And and everybody was so supportive and um, and everybody was so excited. It was just such a good feeling mm -hmm. um, to be a part of that. So, yeah, definitely one of my like best memories. <laughs> <laughs> Kelsey amazing. Rowling's. Oh, <laughs> yes. There you go. Yep, yep. Boom. Yeah. Kelsey Rock. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Tag I, me later, Kelsey. <laughs> I don't mean to circle back to the dating thing, but I can't help but wonder. Um, you said that you don't have to necessarily be, you know, dating a car guy. Mm -hmm. um, do you find that if it would be safer to do that? Because if you would probably know more than most guys that you'd probably meet, like, car wise do you think that might be a little ego deflating for the guy and obviously you wouldn't want to be with guys you know easily deflated but do you think that i'm not trying to be superficial but do you think the car thing matters especially for <laughs> ladies like yourself that are dating it does it it matters a little i do ask them what they drive um but <laughs> here's the thing i ask them what they drive but i also ask them what they've driven and i also ask them what they want to drive because not all of us are in a place financially where we drive what we want to drive. Not all of us are in a place where we are driving what we've driven. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, because we've all driven things, and but we're not necessarily driving them anymore. I'm, I actually have my three-pack right now of, of my, like, happy cars. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm sitting pretty. <laughs> but... Um, you know, I don't judge based on necessarily what you drive, what but if, I can tell things about your personality. Based yeah, on what you that's drive. right. I, yeah. I have it all down. What if you said that, uh, I don't know, uh, cars are the enemy of the state and no one should ever drive cars. Hmm. And he takes the bus. Uh, Would that be a non-starter right there? Uh -huh. Ouch. Okay. Ouch. Yeah, that's a Ouch. game change. Like that, yeah. Well, <laughs> oh, because really because you know, it's like where do you draw the line? Because yeah. I truly do believe, like my wife. She's not into cars per se. She does like cars, and she likes driving, and she likes expensive, nice, fancy cars. Mm -hmm. um, but she has to understand that you know I have my thing, and if she can't accept that, then we can't you know we can't yeah. do this. Yeah. <laughs> so there has to be some kind of understanding yeah. Yeah. when you're a car person. If you're exactly. cheating on car people, who cares? We're not even talking about you. Right. <laughs> but if you are a car person, I feel like there needs to be some like I look at Beth. Yeah. You know Beth. I wouldn't call her a car person. She kind of is and kind of... She's becoming more and more of a car Yeah, she's not like Dan where she's like a closet car person and yeah. saying that she's not. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> but, like, you have to be some kind of understanding. So I would imagine dating, especially car women, which is fewer of you than there are of car guys, right. right? Yeah. And you're trying to date somebody in a pool of car people, I would imagine that's got to be somewhat of a challenge. Maybe not a complete barrier but it's got to be something yeah, you have to consider it is. yeah they do need to know about cars the the bigger thing than knowing about cars is they got to be able to drive i can't deal with somebody who can't drive mm -hmm. like that's a big deal i agree with that one so if he can drive but not a you manual can, oh. <laughs> oh. Deal i mean See, all three of my cars are manuals. Oh, I, yeah. All I'm my cars are manuals, girl. too. Yeah. 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 I'm a stick I only find girl. this in the younger generation that, that <laughs> dudes don't that know. don't know how to drive, yeah. which is unfortunate. Yeah. Um, See, I don't mind teaching. If they're willing to be like, 
I want to drive your car. Will you oh, teach me? Man. I'd be like, yeah, you're not going to cool. learn on my Porsche. I don't mind. <laughs> yeah. He won't be in my 240, but he'll yeah. be in my Subaru. <laughs> okay, so so there's some if there's willingness to you know learn, then see. I don't think Melissa, the face you're making. I, I'm not a teacher. I'm yeah. not here to teach. I'm yeah. too old for that shit. I don't want to. All right. All right. So, but, all right. So, if they signed yeah. up for one of your classes? Yes. <laughs> okay. I'll teach you okay. if you need to learn right, that. Yeah, but right. I don't, I'm not teaching like, I'm not teaching driver's ed. <laughs> like, that shit's for the birds. You need to know that already. All if right. you don't use your blinker, I'm out the door. Oh, so no BMW drivers for you. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Whoa. Sorry. Hey, you guys know who you talk about. You don't know who I'm talking about. <laughs> Oh, all right, well, hey, it, just so it's, it's guys know, like, you know, there's got to be, we all got to have some kind of standard, right? Exactly. So, you know, you know, I don't yeah. want dudes hollering at you that don't, you know, can't drive no manual, you know? I think I would have a really hard time dating somebody that drives a Prius. I'm sorry. Oh. I said it. Wait, wait, what if he I just can't. What if he has a Prius as has, a daily, but he has a other I'm car. I'm okay with it. Mm. Even as a daily. As a daily, I'm okay with it as long as he has some, like, mm. real He's obviously oh, frugal. Oh, I was going to say something really bad. No. Woo. Well, now you got to say, <laughs> say it. Say it, Melissa. Say, say it. it. We need I to was going to say, if he's got a Prius as a daily, but he has like a real panty burner in the in the garage, I'm okay with it. Ooh, what's a panty burner panty in your idea? Um, or your, your idea of one? Okay. Um, Guys, take notes. <laughs> Lamborghini? Or <laughs> no, <laughs> not even. He doesn't have to be a hyper car. Um, I personally have a thing for STIs, not the diseases, uh, the actual, <laughs> <laughs> the Subarus, <laughs> just so we're real clear on that. I'm glad we went here yes. at, at the hour mark, so oh, if yeah. people haven't made it this far, yeah. Yeah. they're just missing so you, out. Just they're so, so you out. know, that's the best car joke we've ever had on one. Yeah, that is. Yeah. Yeah. By far. By winner, far. winner, chicken dinner. Wow. <laughs> um, so I like Subaru STIs. They're a per, uh, like a passion of mine, and then um, mm-hmm. I I'm I'm a Porsche girl, so I like flat engines, flat fours, flat All sixes. Right. Okay. I like those. That's a theme. Uh huh. Yeah. 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 Um, I really like Audi R8. I don't know why, but I have had a thing for those since I was young. I stopped a guy at a gas station one time when I saw him, and I was like, I don't know what you do, sir, but I'll marry you. (laughs) Oh, well, that brings me to my next question then. (laughs) Thank you for the segue. No problem. Anything I can do. So so (laughs) would you consider... Not saying that you would date, but would you consider dating a guy because of the car he drives without even knowing him? Absolutely not. Oh, okay. yeah. No way. That's a huge red no. flag. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, that's, that bitch has gone wrong there. That is not a good idea. Got it. <laughs> that is no. There's a lot no. of douchey guys with nice cars. There's, yeah. There's I'll be honest with you. I think if you're a true car girl, you would never do that. But I think Absolutely. the girls who are... Clout chasers or or money chasers are the ones that are going to do that. Gold diggers. Yeah. 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 I've got my own fucking Porsche. I don't need some (laughs) dude. Yeah. (laughs) Exactly. I got three cars. Do you own a classic Porsche? I own uh, the 40th anniversary 996. Oh, wow. Wait, so that technically is a classic. That's That's a nice one. Silver? silver? It turns 20 years today. Well, not today, but this year. (laughs) You know, today. (laughs) It turns 20 years today. Wow. Is Is it silver? It is. It's GT Carrera yeah, silver. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if a guy ho- was hollering at you at a GT3, is still not qualifications to Oof. what's up? I mean, I don't know. What's he like? Well, that's what I'm Let's saying. Let's talk. That's like, what I'm saying. We'll talk, but no, okay. no, yeah. not, what, not if, what if what if the guy called four one one, not five one one? He's not going to get his gallon of gas. That's for sure. He, but he's they'll have transfer him. Yeah, is the funny part. Oh, really? <laughs> yes, they will. That was the funny story I heard. See? My friend had been calling four one one for years, and oh then they've been gosh. transferring him to five one one. Oh no. Is that the guy that need the extra gallon? <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. It's all linked. Oh. See? He's oh, going to laugh that he made it onto this podcast. Oh. Well, we'll keep him an anonymous. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, we won't ask his name, no. That's hilarious. You can tell me off camera. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, that is Too cool. funny. Uh. So, yeah. So, I don't, I don't need a boy for a car. I've got plenty of cars yeah. and they produce plenty of problems yeah. so i don't need so, any more but, but if he wasn't into into cars um you could 
Work well, we that. better have a better. We better have some like real stability in other areas sure. of our relationship. Sure. Okay. If you know what I mean. I yeah, I, I, I kind of I read feel, what you're saying. I kind of cool. been feeling the speed dating things already started. Yeah. 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 Well, well, I think this is already underway. Oh, wait, so uh, you guys are going to work together on the speed dating? Absolutely. Yes. I'm okay. going to be the hostess yeah. with the most of. Oh, yeah. perfect. <laughs> She's going to be the girl behind the mic. Hell, so, you're going to have such a good time. Yeah. Hey, you're going to have a great time. And I'm going to have a great time watching. I'll help. I'll help. I don't want to be. I don't be some weird guy just watching everybody speed dating like some weirdo. Hey, look at their old dating. Maybe we can do like a cars and coffee, and then when it's cars and coffee is over, go into Brunch. coffee bean and do speed oh. dating inside coffee bean. So here's yeah. a, so here's and, the thing. And and if you mention that you get two dollars off, uh, two one dollar and then another. Oh, exactly. Yeah. See. But I don't know. I like the idea of uh, alcohol in the mix somewhere. I don't know about just coffee. Ba Baileys. So. Just bring some Baileys. Baileys. There you go. Yeah. All right, home. <laughs> so, no, no. With that thing, with that That's dating funny. thing, the cars and coffee thing, right? Yeah. That's See, I think that the meat is important because if you don't want to be there, you're definitely not going to like yeah. when you go inside with this person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you're there for the cars. So I think there needs to be some level of car interest. Yeah, it starts yeah. off with the car meat. Yes. Yeah. But everybody that goes there, I mean, it's, I, I know it'll be a challenge to kind of weed out the people who are just kind of taking advantage of the situation versus, mm -hmm. you know, people that are really trying to participate. But, I feel like that's one of those things where, like, it's got to start there. The cars and coffee thing idea, it, meet in the parking lot, car meet is a, mm -hmm. a great idea. Cause if, and if that's all that is, that's okay, too, because it doesn't have to be about the booze, which yeah. I think is kind of interesting having a cars and co or car meet out of, a, coffee at, out of a place that serves alcohol. Because, yeah. uh, oh, yeah. you know, obviously, you want to drive responsibly and drink yeah. responsibly. Yeah. But, you know. What well, could you see one of those? So they finish, right? And nobody can drive home, so Uber yeah. shows up, <laughs> I know, and all right? these cars are left in the parking lot. Yeah, I know. Right? And I can see that. Yeah. And, then, yeah. and then the Uber guy is driving with his steering wheel yeah, like the, on his yeah. chest. Right here. Yeah, but you don't want to see two people <laughs> where you got to correct them. You see, they got to do, do the walk of shame I, back I, to their I, I cars. Exactly. <laughs> Let's oh, talk about ergonomics. We yeah. could just add a karma care on the back of all of it. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, it can be the twenty-two hour car meet. Yeah, yeah, right? exactly. yeah. Well, I'm gonna be. I'm curious to see how you're gonna put that. Yeah. I, and it sounds to me that the interest is growing. For it that. is cool. definitely growing. Which so, is, I think, really cool. Yeah. I think that's very cool. Yeah. And this show will help. Yeah. Well, Obviously. thanks to your <laughs> you. talk on the show, <laughs> that's what really got it going because people were messaging me more, yeah. way more after that. So. Well, when you said that you had, you know, almost, like, you know, eight people yeah, like messaging you. People just for, and we were up. just talking about it kind yeah. of like in a LARF. Yeah. yeah. You know? And it was mostly just when people were hitting me up, it was more so like about dating car people and um uh, and then a couple people were asking me about the dating app because that was the the super dating app thing that we talked oh, about yeah. back in the day yeah yeah and then there were a couple people out of those seven people who were like well you know there was this event in san diego that they just did or they're going to do i don't remember who is hosting it but they're like you should do something like that out here and that's how the speed dating thing kind of like mm. came into play wait a minute would their dating profile be a profile of the car too Ooh, yeah, so like we've, we've been throwing around ideas of what we're <laughs> going to do. Like cool. we were like, do we take headshots and car shots and put them on the story and like do That's profile cool. features on the stories? Because <laughs> there because some girls, I would never date a rotary guy. Yeah. You know, or something like oh, that, you know? So, Rob Dom is dreamy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he totally is. Yeah, he is. He's dreamy. <laughs> He's dreamy. Yeah. Hey, Did quick. you hear that, Rob Dom? Yeah. Hey, <laughs> qu hey quick note about Rob Dom. I saw him at Seven Stock last year. Yeah. And, you know, usually he draws a crowd, but he parked way in the back because he was there to race his three rotor um, and get some rounds in. And I didn't even know he was there until I was walking the pits. And I'm like, oh, crap. And he's hot lapping his car. Yeah. He's just hot lapping. And his car's worth two, three hundred. Mm -hmm. Who knows how much his car's worth? And I was like, you know what? You got some respect for me, buddy, because he was just there. He, you know, of course he was signing autographs. He's a, he's a cool dude, yeah. but he wasn't there to do it. He was there to just run yeah. his car. And I was like, you know what? Yeah. Heck yeah, dude. I, so I support him, you know, because I, I didn't know him before. I just yeah. saw him on YouTube and stuff like that. I, and, the first time I saw him was at Seven Stock when he came that, what was it? What was 2020 or 2019? When uh, he came out with the car, when he first came out with I the- I think it was the 2019 it one. It was the three rotor, right? Or was yeah, it, the, it, was, it was a three rotor. It was a three rotor. And, and I remember when he came out and everybody was like, oh. Oh my god! Oh my god! So everybody crowded <laughs> around his car. 
So I got video footage of that, but yeah, oh, he's no. much pretty in person. <laughs> yeah, I know. You don't have to tell me twice. Uh, I like his car. That's all. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, no, yeah. He's, he seems like a really cool dude, but. I'll date a rotary boy if that's what it means. <laughs> I don't think most rotary guys look Oof. like him. So. Well. <laughs> yeah, good luck with they that. They usually look more poor. Damn. <laughs> so what do you, what do you drive? <laughs> Not a rotary right now because they don't work. <laughs> Unfortunately, oh boy, yeah. nice. So, oh. oh boy, it has been fun to have both of you on. Thank this you. Was, yeah, I mean, I we knew this would be a lively show. <laughs> yes, and I know we gave Gabe a shitload of material to post on social uh, media. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> the reels are gonna be great. It's gonna, it'll be, yeah. it's gonna be Melissa, 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 <laughs> Gabe, Melissa, Melissa. <laughs> Melissa. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll definitely have to have you guys back on because I'm sure well, this will be like an ongoing series of the car dating thing because I know oh, we need updates. We yes. need updates. <laughs> yeah. For well, just for yeah, us because right? we're curious. Wait, and, what, what are we going to do? A car dating slash bumper sticker show? Oh, the yeah. bumper sticker. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The bumper yeah. sticker? That's yes. right. Yeah, we did talk. Those yeah. might tie in pretty good, actually. Yeah. Some yeah, of the phrases cool. and the, yeah. I you mean bumper stickers that you can actually put on the bumper, the ones that go in the engine bay? Oh, both. Okay. Yeah. I P love PG, stickers. PG and rated R. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All the car people want the rated R. No one yeah, wants PG yeah. stuff or whatever. <laughs> um, yeah. No, I, I'm, I'm very curious. And I'm also curious to see how Helm does. So. Wait, huh? Don't worry about it, buddy. <laughs> oh, yeah. We'll have, we'll have updates. You're, you're, you're going to be there recovering the story for West of Tulsa. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You and and, and Christina, who's now our uh, honorary field reporter. <laughs> yeah, right? And Helm can be our first male profile. There you go. Yeah. You've got cars. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he is a car guy. Some, there's some chick that likes wagons. What? Hey, oh. I like wagons. Oh, uh, well, we're I wagons. Like there you go. <laughs> See, we're wagons. Yes. I wagons like all the way. Yeah. I I, I, first match. Here we go. <laughs> let, let, let us know how your date goes, guys. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Maybe we can do a practice <laughs> ride. I know, I know. As long as we can film it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. I'll be the chauffeur. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> See, I told you it started. I, I know. <laughs> See? I knew it started. <laughs> oh, All dear right. <laughs> Melissa, Christina, thank you so, yeah, so much. So have you both so back on again. It'll be yeah, fun. Yeah. That's, yeah, it was fun. Anytime. Yeah. Um, and I'm going to just plug my little karma camera. Oh, yes, definitely do that. Yes. Um, so this weekend from 11 to 1.30. No, we should, we should say. Yes. Because you're saying this weekend, but this probably won't oh. air for a couple weeks. This won't oh. air at least two more so, weeks. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. what do you have okay. coming okay. up, okay. So what's, coming what's up, happening in a month? Um, what's happening in a month? We're going to do the one for before Kendall's event. Before prep. Kendall's event, the drift prep. Um, drift prep. April. When is that one? Oh, that's Mother's May. Day is her event. So May eleventh. So May eleventh, the day before. May eleventh, we have a Karma Care. Yeah. At at two thirty, cars and coffee in La Habra. Oh, there you go. Okay. And if people want to reach you, what's the best way to reach you? Uh, www.karmacarecalifornia.com. With can, with a C. With a C. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> Karma Care California with a C. And on C. Instagram, how do they? Uh, same. Okay. Karma Care California at Karma Care California or at Melissa Way. And that's um, Melissa, M-E-L-I-S-S-A-W-A-H-E. Yes. And I know you've done it before, but you go ahead and throw yeah, out your info. So, I, so we have our big drift event on April 28th. So that this may air or may not, but um, it, which is sold out. But I am hoping people come and spectate. And learn all about it. Super excited because it's Miss Motorhead's first co-host for a drift event. Mm. But there is a big event on Mother's Day for all women drifters. Um, my friend Kendall is hosting it through Sparkle Motion Drift. And I know a ton of girls are coming. They're like bringing all their moms. Oh, or that's I, cool, I'm bringing my kids. Oh, um, I can, I'm cool. putting them to work. They're going to work my booth. <laughs> but <laughs> nice. I'm going to be out there drifting as well. So they get oh. to actually see me in person for the first time. But um, I recommend if anybody's interested in going, any girls, they want to go check it out. You guys can come out and spectate. But so so it's, May 11th at? It's so it's Mother's Day, which I think is May 12th. Oh, May 12th. Okay. Yeah, it's May a 12th Sunday. At... And, and it's at Apple Valley Speedway. Wow. Okay. And the website, or I'm sorry, not the website, the social media uh, Instagram account is called Sparkle Motion Drift. Sparkle Motion Drift. Yes. Cool name. All right. Yeah. Nice. And it was Grid Partners, not Grid Life. Grid Partners is my new, <laughs> my new help. Grid so partners. sorry. Yeah. It's really early in the day for me, even though it's not early in the day that we're recording this. I'm sorry. Yeah, and thank you guys. 
Thank yeah, you for having us so much. It was nice to be on with you cause because I wasn't the first on one, it. Yeah. Yes. I, I yeah. wasn't on there. Yeah. yeah. And let us know about your podcast too. When that gets yes. 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 I definitely will. Yeah. We'll promote the hell out of it. Thank you. Okay. We'll make yeah. you more popular than us. Thank you. Yeah. I'll she already is more that. popular than us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. She knows everybody. <laughs> yeah, she both, knows. both of them are. Yeah. You know so many people. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. I think yeah. it's great that you're restarting that. Thank yes. you. Yeah. I'm excited. All right. Yeah. And hopefully we played some role in inspiring you. You absolutely did. you had did. so much fun no, while you, you were here. No, complete, you guys have done a lot. You have no idea. I've just been like so excited to like start all this stuff up and I've been so busy doing things and a lot of it is thanks to you guys. So. Good. Awesome. Yeah. I appreciate it. it. And, and then, having you guys here. And the next show, maybe we could uh, elaborate more on what you do, which I only found out till later um, with like the printing. Oh, that's, yes. That's not just w- printing. Yeah. I, lo- I day lo- job. That's, I mean, uh, I love stickers. I love yeah. that's all I'm <laughs> saying. I'm, I'm from the printing All the industry. merch stuff. I wish <laughs> yeah. I met with Jeffrey yesterday. I did a bunch of stuff for Jeffrey yesterday. So Jeffrey Willerth. Yeah. yeah. Jeffrey Willerth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Z Club. If, if, oh, if you actually Z-Club. watched our show, him, no, I know he was on our last show. Yeah, I know. I was. Yeah. Just... Wow. <laughs> Are those some of the some of the? Yeah, way to, way to change the, change the subject, buddy. Uh, <laughs> I no. I didn't do his stuff there, but we're working on some oh, stuff for nice. him, like a booth, awesome. a booth setup. I'm gonna do. You're talking about the Z setup. stickers that we got here. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. I'm nice. working on a pop up for him, probably, oh, nice. and and like a tablecloth and things like. Oh, nice. Oh, that's cool. That's very cool. Yeah. Yeah. I love that the community's. You know, just not just in Ventura, but just in general, totally. like, you know, because we know Supporting guys that general. down in L.A. They're like, oh, yeah, Christina. We talk. I'm like, I yeah. know. The heck? You know, yeah, it's so. crazy. I'm cool. in L.A. a lot. I like to go out there and support people out yeah. that way because there's probably a majority of car stuff is. So, yeah. yeah. So I'm there a lot. <laughs> cool. Yeah. All right. So anybody who's been listening, they can tell I've tried to wrap this up three I times. I know. I'm sorry. But no, no, it's not your fault. <laughs> I mean, it's a podcast. It's we a have, good, we have good, no limits here. We can keep going and going and going. It's a good show. It's a good show. Yeah, the ladies have show. been awesome. Absolutely. Do you have to pee, CJ? The only, the only problem is, <laughs> no, no, actually, if I go like this, you'll hear my stomach oh. growling. Uh, so. Oh, oh you're, hungry. Oh, you're <laughs> hungry. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank, Thank you for being on, you're ladies. We really enjoyed having yeah. you on. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, it's been fun. All right. So don't forget to follow us, like, and you can subscribe. We've got our YouTube Channel. Thank you. That's his job now. Yeah, he's I'm the channel guy. Channel. YouTube channel. Yeah. He's I gotta the Ed McMahon. I got to find, yeah. find new ways to say channel. <laughs> channel. <laughs> we also have our uh, our uh, tip line page. Yes. We're going to promote it twice. We yeah. did the top and the bottom. So, again, go to our website, westtulsa.com, click on the tip line page, fill it out, send it in to us. You will end up in studio probably. Yep. Right? All right. Thanks as as for take watching. A shower. That's it. <laughs> that doesn't even matter. I haven't washed this in three months. Oh, well. There so, you go. I got to go. There you go. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody, or listening. And depending on what you're listening on, we appreciate you tuning in and, and listening to our bullshit for about an hour and 15 minutes. <laughs> All right. We'll see you west of Tulsa.